with Restart. This is a watercolor painting that tutorial that I wanted to share with you guys. I recorded the whole thing. I didn't know if I would end up um, actually sharing it or not, but I kind of liked how it came out. So here we go. I'm using some squirrel hair brushes, a variety of watercolor paints. Uh, I believe most of it is Daniel Smith, but I have a smattering of Windsor Newton and some other um, watercolor paints. Did I say oil? I don't know if I said oil. I usually do oil, uh, but these are watercolors. The first thing I'm doing is kind of a dark midnight blue color. This is in the Art Snacks Plus Daniel Smith watercolor collection that they sent out. Um, well, you had to buy it, but you know, nevertheless, I purchased it. Um, we started with like a dark blue. I did add some gold to it, uh, in some areas just to sort of differentiate, uh, some tonal values here, uh, making some areas darker. I was pretty heavy on the water. I wanted it to look very drippy and very watercolory. Um, and I also painted this upright so that I would get those drips. So here I am taking um, the larger of the squirrel hair brushes. And by the way, I think I got these on Amazon for like nothing. And I love them. They hold so much water. It came in a set of three. It was like a, a smaller one, a medium one, and a bigger one, obviously. Um, but I'm taking some black and it's just plain black with, you know, a little bit of water, not quite as drippy as before. Uh, and I'm outlining sort of the shadow of the hand, which... It's supposed to look like my little girl here is kind of scratching at the wall behind her. Um, it's definitely a little more loose than I'm used to painting. I actually do a lot more portraits and more realistic type stuff, but I, I'm trying to be a little looser just, you know, to expand my, my repertoire, if you will, see what I can do. Um, so yeah, I'm taking some of that black with the blue now and sort of adding that in since I've got the dark in there. Uh, and, and blending that out. Um, I sketched this, like I said, pre uh, doing the background using a watercolor pencil in sort of a tan color. That way you guys could see it. Uh, it was a fairly loose sketch. I knew that I was going to go right over top of it. I also felt like that color, if it did uh, mix into some of the darker shades, uh, would give it kind of a mottled look, which I was pretty happy with. It almost gave it like a, a dull, almost dead sort of feeling, and um, I, I liked it. Um, I was able to layer these colors also really well. Um, as I said, this is sort of new. I, I'm kind of figuring out the amounts, but I know with watercolor, the best thing to do is to layer. So you build up the color, build up the color. I guess you do that with all paintings. So, I mean, you know, what's, what's to say this is any different? Um, so anyway, anyhow, going in with sort of a, uh, I think this is a yellow ochre and some like a yellow white kind of color. I added some blues in there in some areas as I layered and I had some reds in there. Um, I even added some purple in. I kind of just mixed it up so it looked really skin-like without being very realistic. Um, I wanted it to be realistic in a, in a sense, but not, you know, super realistic, I guess. I don't know, is that the way you do it? So, um, I, you know, I left some highlighting, I left some darker areas, and um, obviously went over top with everything. Now, there were a couple of times that I, a couple of things I skipped over because I just, it, it took a little while to like layer and layer some of the darker colors, like the purple. Um, plus I ended up changing that like 10 times uh, to get the tone that I wanted. I actually had a dress on that day that matched it and it was more pinky. I originally wanted it purple and then I don't know, you'll see, I kind of shifted a few times, but, um, anyways, letting the, the colors kind of mix in utilizing all the different tones together, um, adding that depth behind it. This is her hair now that we're putting in, um, around it. I know there are general rules for like dark and light and generally you're supposed to kind of like block out the areas that you want light and I, I, I get confused because, you know, there's sometimes where I, I need to start with the dark and then highlight on top and vice versa. I guess it just kind of depends on what you're doing. I try to let with watercolor, the highlights and dark areas sort of happen on their own. So I'll, I, I know, right, that I want her to be curved. So I know the dark is going to be sort of around her arms. 
um, like on the edges of her arms, that there's going to be highlighting in her and um, shadowing in her in her breasticle area. I know that, um, you know, especially around the eyes, like you're trying to sink in the areas of the nose and highlight areas of the nose. So as far as like following a lot of general rules, I kind of just went with what needed to happen in this painting. So there are areas in this painting that I start dark and work light. And then there's areas that I start dark and, you know, vice versa. So anyhow, um, you know, she's got some blood. Um, I believe that is um, the, I'm trying to remember what the, there were some Daniel Smith colors as well as some, um, like I said, the other, like the, I, I have a little um, box of, uh, like travel watercolor co color colors, watercolor colors. And so I use like the classic reds and just sort of mix them together with different tones. I mean, the, the cool thing about a painting like this is I was able to sort of just mix and blend and play and see what worked. And if I liked something, I kept it. If I didn't, I kept moving. Um, there are some areas, like I said, I skipped over because it took a little while or I had to take a break. I was doing this. It was hot as freaking craziness outside. So I usually where I video, uh, where I record is outside on the deck, but it was so hot. I set up inside, um, and I kind of did the best I can do, but I kind of liked, it was like almost eerie looking and I got some shadows. So I know the setup is a little bit different, but, um, I kept getting interrupted. So the doors behind me, um, are lead to the kitchen or in front of me, I guess, lead to the kitchen and people kept coming down. So I kept having to pause and stop and start over. And at some point, like, I think I forgot to hit record. I don't know. Don't ask me. There was a lot going on. If you are a mom or a dad, you might understand that. Um, so here we are kind of etching in the nose here, kind of getting the shape that we want uh, and the direction of the nose. Obviously, she's uh, not looking completely straight ahead. She's looking a little bit to the I don't know, right, left, depending on where you're looking. And, uh, you know, I kind of started to just outline the areas before putting any detail in. Um, and obviously I switched to a slightly smaller squirrel hairbrush, uh, utilizing a little less water at this point. We don't want it dripping. Um, also after this video, I'm super, super excited. I actually went and purchased one of those, uh, really nice, um, easels that like lays down so you can do watercolor and oil or you can travel. Um, it's heavy duty. I really like it. I also bought a new, um, uh, oh God, what it's called, um, like tripod for my recording that I can shoot down on top of things. I, I, I've been rigging it with my hair stuff, like my hair tripod and like having to wrap the camera around it and figure it out. So I, I, I finally invested in some actual like recording equipment and, uh, painting supplies. Not that I don't always love to buy painting supplies, but I needed those two things. So Anyhow, I'm using, um, I think this is like uh, some yellow ochre and some brown to give it, you know, those scratches behind the nails. Um, and again, you going in and using that color, um, I think I added a little bit of white in to give it kind of a gray look with some cream to it um, on the nose so that we get that like depth and then, you know, adding it up to the, to where the tip is and it comes out, right? That's how you do the nose. And it's not perfect. Again, I'm used to, you know, measuring everything out perfectly. I wanted to, this to be a little bit more crazy I don't know modern abstract what is it what's the terminology oh so here I, I dribble a little bit too wet so I took a uh, dry brush picked that up I had to do that a couple times because again I'm working upright with watercolor that's can be a little bit tricky um, so I'm putting some lighter areas in that I then go back and blend in some of the darker colors again it was like going back and forth from light to dark a lot so that I could do a lot of blending um, and just get those shapes in there. Uh, one of the things I've learned over the last, co the course of the year that I've been doing this, or I guess, I guess it's been about a year and a half now that I've been doing this, is to look at shapes rather than, oh, paper towel to wipe it up. Again, got a little, got a little drippy, just a little drippy. So during the course of this, you know, there's a handful of things I've learned, obviously, from watching videos and just taking classes. Um, I do take classes at the virtual instructor.com. I paid for like a year of that. I love him. It, it really is a fantastic program. If you have a second to check it out, um, you know, obviously he's not sponsoring me. I'm not to that level yet or anything, but we working on it. We working on it. Um, but anyhow, I use him and I just, I really, really enjoy his classes. 
But I also watch a lot of free stuff and, you know, generally I'll buy a class here and there and kind of just, you know, watch it at my leisure if I have time to do it. But one of the things that I've learned and one of the things that I think is the most important is, you know, to work thin to thick on all types of paintings in, in for, for what I do, as well as shapes. That was so huge to me and, and helped me uh, to figure out what I was doing. It was always like, okay, well, a hand looks like this. Well, that's not really true. Now, in this painting, a hand kind of does look like a four-year-old painted it. But if I'm doing realistic artwork, the hand is not just, you know, four fingers and a thumb and, you know, these lines that go up or like these stick figures that you're used to drawing when you're a kid. It's a series of, you know, circles and squares and triangles and different shapes. And so anything I do as far as highlighting, shadowing, um, you know, going around the eyes, even the hair, I'm looking at shapes and not necessarily details, um, at least at this point in the painting. Uh, so you'll notice as I'm going around her nose, oh, oh, there you go. See, I skipped a little bit on that left side because I was painting and I forgot to hit record because my dog had to go out. Um, but I, generally, I just started adding some of the colors. And so I added um, some blue and some green and some pink in to give it a little bit more depth on that left side, right side, the darker side. I, I still, how old am I? 40, 39? I can't figure it out. I don't know. I can't figure out which side is which. So I added some darker colors and some pinks and I just sort of let them like run together to get that modeled effect. Um, and then here I go in with, you know, highlighting and just sort of, did, did, you know, doing some stuff around the eyes. Um, I changed the skin tone as well. But yeah, so shapes. So, so shapes, I think are super, super important in everything that you do. And letting happy accidents happen, right? Like if something happens and you're like, oh, well, let's kind of see what happens. One of the best, I don't remember who told me this, but, or where I learned it, but I do this. I use this a lot. It's like, if you make a mistake instead of starting over, which is what I generally would do, I love to try to make it work. So people will say, you know, don't start over, just try to make it work. See what you can do. Try to make it work. Um, so sometimes things will happen where like I was drawing a strawberry the other day, just a strawberry, just, we were sitting around on father's day and I was drawing a strawberry and, um, my daughter came over and bought my arm and the, the water from, I was using uh, watercolor pens, um, dripped and like spread my strawberry out outside the lines. And I was so bummed. I'm like, Oh man, what am I going to, I got to start over. So I did, I started over. And then I thought later, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back to that strawberry. And I ended up liking that one better because it was a little bit more modern and funky and I had to work with it. I had to figure out how to do it. Also, watercolor can be somewhat forgiving. I mean, if you wet it, you can lift it up with, you know, another, a, a dry um, uh, brush or something. You can, you know, kind of play with it that way. So anyhow, so you'll see me like, I, I, again, I'm adding these colors in. So I started with something a lot lighter and then I'm going back in with the skin and adding more colors and adding more colors. And as far as the colors go, I mean, it's basically yellow ochre. Um, I, I've got like a, um, a goldy kind of skin color. I'm trying to think of what the color is. I don't know the watercolors as well as the oil colors. I imagine they're all named pretty much the same. But I've noticed with oil watercolors that they usually have creative names like Midnight Blue or... Um, uh, magic magenta or, um, you know, I don't know, something like that, but I just, I don't really pay attention to it that much with oil painting. I do, but with watercolor, I'm like, Ooh, this goes together. Let's try this. Um, especially in something like this, where if you think of skin tone, skin tone is not one color. It's not flat. Uh, skin tone has a lot of colors. And, it, and when you start painting, you start noticing that. I, like I look at people all the time and I'm like, they have this or they have that, or, um, uh, oh, I see some, you know, blue veins or green veins or, oh, I see some red in their skin or, or what have you. Um, also, where I'm trying to make this skin look like it almost drips a little bit. That's what the white line is there for. Um, but yeah, um, I, I saw an ad on Facebook the other day, this girl, and I'm kind of dying to take one of her classes. She actually has a really, really cool... Um, uh, thing that she does. Oh, this is just white, by the way, that I'm just kind of letting drip down, which I actually really, really loved. And then I'm highlighting the, the breasticle areas once again. But anyway, she does faces and she does them in all different colors. 
and it looks so realistic. And I'm like, that is the coolest thing. I just, I don't know, I thought it was really neat. I wish I could remember her name. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and, and put it in the notes down below. But it, it was really fun to watch. And I thought, I've done that. I've done portraits with different colors. But I'm so, I, I feel like I have to get it right in the perfect spot. And she kind of just like slaps blue, slaps green, slaps this. And it just looks so cool. So I don't know. I felt like I was a little bit inspired by that um, in this painting as well. So, But you'll see now I'm getting the shadows and the lights right. It's starting to look a little bit more... Um, you know, realistic. It's not realistic. It's not like, you know, it's not like that. It's obviously more modern and fun, but you're starting to see that it's not as flat with these colors as I'm adding them on. And of course, adding brighter reds and darker colors. And I don't know. I kind of like her. She's a little scary, but maybe she's good for Halloween. I don't know. I like her. But most of you know that I also am, am too a little scary. So here's some close-ups. I did this so you could see the textures a little bit better. I understand it's kind of hard to see from farther away. So you can see I'm on Arches watercolor paper, cold pressed, um, 300 gram, I think is what it's called. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like her. Uh, this is called Enough. And I'm Michael Helene. Uh, subscribe, like. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.